So after thinking about this a few more minutes, I've decided to go ahead and I think just attempt to transplant these switches onto the other board that's working rather than order caps and put more money into this. I think it just makes more sense to keep it as cheap as I can at this point. It's not going to be used heavily. Uh, I just don't see a reason to put more money into it than I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to see if I can remove one of these switches from the good one. So it looks like, yeah, these two little wires should just lift up off. There's a nylon standoff down there that those were attached to. Ah, ah. Hopefully this is a uh, Plugged up. Ah. That's not. Tin it up a bit and clean it. Let's see if we can actually get enough heat here to actually. Ah. Remove the solder from these little mounting posts. Did a reasonable job. It's not great because the tip's a little small. I'm not fully fitting over. But you know what? I can accept it. I think those are actually breaking loose. It looks to me like the rotary switch is connected here. Geometer is connected back here. That didn't clear as well as I would have liked. I can see there's one that I'm going to want to add some solder to and attempt to clear again. through this and see if I can just get the switch to a cleanly come loose. So that one didn't unsolder as well as I would have liked. see that the everything down here low seems to be disconnected. That point is yeah that point still got solid solder in it. Let's try the hand, hand tool. the full switch assembly removed. It came out relatively easily. The only things that gave me trouble really were the uh, pins here. Uh, when one of the one of the leads on this rotary switch, oh those are really delicate. Those are going to be interesting to get back in. Uh, that one is really bent. Yeah, those will be interesting to get back down through the holes. I'll be able to do it. I can 
flatten that one out. Yeah, that's better. One of them was bent nearly 90 degrees, which didn't make a lot of sense because I did unsolder six pins. That does give me the nice little assembly. I don't know if you can see it in here. There's a little bitty C-ring back in there on the shaft that goes into that potentiometer on the back. That you know, and here I'd be able to probably get at it and get it off and on with it on the circuit board. It looked nearly impossible. Wow. Check the camera. And I'm going to move on to removing this second one. Yes, this is the bad board. I got to remember that. But there's a slight difference in color between the boards. The board that's currently in the scope is the quote working one. Well, there you go. I was going to say that's being a little more stubborn than the other switch was. Those are loose. And we'll just repeat the same procedure here. I'm actually not getting. Uh, uh. On the other side, the solder actually flowed pretty quickly. On this uh, side, it's not flowing as easily. And of course, I can't get really good contact down onto the board because the tip size on this is a little bit too small for these. I think on this one, I'll add a bit of solder. There it goes. switch leads. I just managed to bend the one taking the other switch assembly out. And there's a tensionometer sitting right here. I really need to order the uh, larger tip for the desoldering gun here. I just haven't got around to it. Set that aside. That leads loose, that leads loose, that leads loose. These are pretty delicate, but I'm guessing they're all loose. Yeah. for this one. Plated through holes, I'm not sure what's got a grip on that. There it is. And there's the second assembly. Um, I am absolutely positive these are identical, and they are. There's no left or right mirroring or anything, they are just identical to each other. So now the goal is to remove the two from the uh, working board and substitute these in. We'll 
difficult part is going to be these little springy these just aren't stiff pins they're just kind of very thin very springy those will be kind of interesting to line up and get in but I should be able to hopefully see enough to walk it down through so the next step for me is to pull that ooh, good card out of the other scope and we'll do the same thing to that board. So I've removed the uh, same switch assemblies from the board that's working. The holes are cleared. And of course the challenge is going to be getting the six leads of that switch. Those six little spring leads down into place. Uh, I really need to find a pair of better glasses and there's always, even though I own 30 pair, the pair I need have uh, Vanish from sight. Tends to be how it always works. Let's see if I can look, locate a pair that'll work. And I do believe this is going to be a little bit challenging, although we'll find out. No, by golly, that wasn't bad at all. All six of the leads are through. He is back down flush. That actually was easier than I thought it was going to be, which is good. And one, two, three. All six of the leads came through. We are mounted back down flush. I think we can just go ahead and solder this replacement switch in. Sometimes things go your way. Sometimes they don't. So I'm going to hit the potentiometer first here on the back. Go ahead and hit the front of the switch assembly so it's held on both ends. Take another look to make sure it's flush, which it is. Uh, maybe not as flush as it could be. Uh, then maybe just as flush as it's going to be. That's just bow on the board from that, I think that center foam. Uh, get these two back. These four solder joints here around that metal frame are really the structural support for it. The rotary switch. If we can get these to take solder. We have somewhat got this in frame. These two it should be kind of a pain to get back into place. Of course, the wire got hot very quickly. Contact nearly as well as I would have liked. Let's see if I can clean the wire or some of the solder off the bit of wire. Let's see if I can get it to wrap around there the way it originally was. on that. There it went. Get a little bit 
course, our flow. This one seems fine, but I'm going to reflow it. Now, of course, there's a bunch of uh, calibration capacitors built into this switch, which I'm going to completely ignore here. This is, you know, we're going to completely throw the calibration of the scope out. So I said before, I really don't care. Uh, I could at some point find the calibration manual and do a calibration on it, but like I said, for what I'm doing, it really shouldn't matter. If I'm trying to do anything with high accuracy, I'm going to use my uh, Roden Schwartz RTD 2004. So the question becomes, will this one go on as easy as the other one did? Eat the other glasses so I can get eyeballs on all six of those little bitty pins. One, two, three, four, five, six. They came right through. Well, it's going back together much easier than I thought. Hopefully, I'm actually recording here. I'm somewhat in frame. Oops. Don't want to melt the earpiece on my glasses. Uh, clean up the tip. solder everything. And again, as you've probably seen here, the right tools make all the difference. The uh, Heyco to start a desoldering station is just a wonderful, wonderful tool. It makes this kind of work actually pleasant. Uh, it's just so much easier. As you've seen, it, it's done 90% of the desoldering for me. I had to come back a couple places, add additional solder, and, and just use the manual tool. It was more convenient to kind of get over those larger pins. Still made this much easier than it potentially could have been. Try to remove solder off the wire there. to get the little loop here to open up. It might have been just easier to replace these pieces of wire. There's nothing special about them. This one's just too short. That's really weird. Does that actually go? Where's 
special. It's just dropped into a hole. Oops. That's the last thing I wanted to do when I just did it, and that was bend that little pin. And you still really don't go down like that. I don't understand. The pin isn't that big. That I'm happy with. I was just being a real little bugger. <coughs> that lines up. Definitely not solder holding that crimped. Come on, go down over there. There you go. Oh, poop. It sprung back up off when I heated the solder. it in the other direction. I'm really not happy with this connection here. The solder joint continues to be kind of ugly and gray. I'm going to rework it. There's all little pins on little nylon isolators here coming out of the switch assembly. That I'm working to get reconnected. That broke the solder loose on that one. And I should be able now to open the hole back up on it. Remove the excess solder from the little pin. Hopefully work that back onto there. There you go. That's better. At least that looks reasonably good to me. I really didn't clean the flux from the board. I probably should. I should probably go get some contact cleaner. Give these pots a shot. And then look about, see about putting this all back together. So, go retrieve the contact cleaner. Actually, is it sitting right here? I don't think so. No, that's not contact cleaner. I'll be back. So, I'm going to proceed on to. Uh, Going ahead and removing, or just trying to clean some of the flux up from these little switch assemblies here. I've got it on low flow. I'll give it a little shot here. And I've got some Q-tips. And I'll just try to get in there and clean what I can out of there.
Yeah, it's pulled up. A fair amount of flux off the board. And then I'll hit this side the same way. Oh, ooh, then I got a big spray. Didn't mean to get that big a spray. Flux is a little worse over here, and there's old flux on the board. From when it was originally soldered, it shows up because of the white silk screen around the solder pads on this side. But I'll go ahead and kind of as best I can break that up. I don't know that flux here even matters, but. can. Oops. Oh, I got way too much again. This is certainly part of the active circuitry where that little wafer switch with the six wires comes through. So it's not going to hurt. Got a nice little shot that time. Yeah, even a lot of the old dead flux from when this was originally assembled is coming off. Necessary here? I don't know. Do I feel better about it? Yes. Turn the soldering tool off. It doesn't need to be sitting there idling. Hopefully this didn't just destroy the calibration, although I'm sure it's not going to be good after this. That's a nasty brown flux coming off. Next thing I want to do is hit the pots. Uh, looking at like this rotary switch assembly here these guys, which ultimately feed back through those little contacts. They're sealed. I'm not even going to try to get any uh, cleaner in there. But for the potentiometer here on the back, I can get a shot of deoxid down in there. Hopefully. Hopefully not have it squirt back into my face. Give him a nice little spin there. Hopefully that will remove some of the noise out of the pots. Same thing with the pot here. That one actually feels a little better inside now. This one's kind of gummy feeling inside. I don't know if this is going to change that. but No, that helped a whole bunch. We got the little pot back here. And we'll give it some nice rotations. I'll set that aside to uh, evaporate up. This is, of course, the one that was mechanically in much better shape. I'm looking to see if there's any way to kind of get into those potentiometers on the front of it. So I'm looking down in here and I'm not really seeing that's a rotary switch and they're open contacts. So I don't have a problem giving that a shot. Just because it's not sealed. Potentiometer there that I don't think I can. Well, maybe I can get a shot in there. Not gonna hurt. No, I can feel that actually 
helps lubricate it up. And there's a second pot behind it that you really can't get into. I don't think I can get into these two. Maybe that one there. Yeah, but I can feel that. It's lubricated that up. That's better. At least it feels physically better. This one, there's no real access down in there, and I'm not going to pull it apart further to gain access. That's the intensity. I'm not really worried about it. I can hit these two switches that are the input. AC, DC, and ground. Hopefully this isn't a mistake. I don't know if that was on camera or not. Oh yeah, that switches moving much better anyhow there's a play around with a couple of chemicals uh, wipe some of the excess out of here and as always I get a much bigger spray than I intend to Next, yeah, I can't see into these switches. Actually, they're hard to say how those are wired up mechanically. I'm going to leave the uh, trigger mode switches alone. They don't get played with all that much. The pots are what I was the most worried about. Especially the ones that see high usage. Yes, the bench is becoming rather buried here and stuff, as it always does. Tools scattered everywhere. So the next step here is to uh, substitute in the board. I almost tried to put it in upside down. Wouldn't that have been fun? Get all these kind of cables worked up through. Some of these I can connect right up to keep them from falling back in. Get him to come up through and drop down into place. This guy comes in really from the side here. It's already kind of wrapped in the right way. Connects on here. Oh, did you see the mistake I made here? Yeah. Would have actually helped if I got the pots down through the correct holes first. Because with these connectors on, I'm not going to be able to do that. Sometimes the best laid out plans don't work as actually need to do that first. I've got everybody up through except it looks like one connector. Or maybe I have it up through as well. You go there. You go there. Oh, did it fall back down again? Doggone it. This is the same one that gave me grief last time. And can I fix? 
fish it up out of there, yes. channel that's the trigger tap that I didn't get seated down tight in the first play connected 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 so every one of the connectors has somebody down on it and they all seem to be down on solid bits back together. Oops. There were nuts on the three of these, but they don't pull up tight. I think they're just finger tight plus a half turn. I don't know honestly that they're technically actually required because they're not providing any kind of structural uh, component. But we'll put them back because they were originally there. Part of the uh, cave in, I think, on that other front, with somebody went ahead and actually torqued these tight, which was the wrong thing to do. As they really, there's nothing backing these, they're just kind of the front panels floating there, so they're not meant to be structural. I said, I'm not convinced they're even needed. came off pretty easily. I can see that starting to bow a little bit. I'm not going to take it any tighter than that. Rotary switches all the way around. That's these two guys. Never have enough room. Never, ever, ever have enough room. I gotta find the uh, screwdriver bits. There they are. For the uh, set screws on these. I believe I used this bit. And I did. And that should point down at the five there. Of course, I got to be able to actually access a set screw hole. Maybe coming all the way around the other way, I'll bring the set screw up, and it does. Rotates around and points well, every place it needs to point. Same procedure on this one, get into the set screw. Get it lined up there on the five. And that comes around to the five on the other side. Astronomically tight, but tight enough they don't work loose. 
is always helpful. I should have two. orientation God. these guys good. And again, the white line on these isn't critical. I just kind of want them when they're rotated facing the same general direction as they do. And so we've got all of the uh, controls back on. which is nice. Everything looks good. Get the uh, turntable back up here. Part of the purpose of the turntable is it gets electronic devices up off the bench. There's little bits of solder and stuff down there from soldering work I've done. I could have probably cleaned this up. So is there a cal direction? Pull for times 10. That's simply triggering. Pull for times 5. Pull for times 5. Cal here is all the way this way and this way. Like I said, not that I believe it's going to be well calibrated at this point. sitting on. Now let's see if I can get a trace and not smoke and fire. What am I sitting on under there? Be a little ball of solder or something. Make sure we're in frame. bit make it easier to see in the camera. Now we have a power LED. And I hear no hissing or popping. I don't smell anything burning. That's good. Uh, we have a very slow trace sweeping across the screen. Am I set to channel? I'm set to add on the two channels. There's channel one. better. Let's bring in both channels. Uh, channel 2 position. Let me grab a couple of scope probes. These are cheap Velleman ones, but they'll be fine for this. It's all of a 20 megahertz scope. And let's look at the uh, calibrator. Output. Yeah, let's see, it's at the times 10 as it should be. Sorry, bit of a coughing attack there. This is 0.5 volts peak to peak. That's set to uh, 20 millivolts. Bring you around to 20 millivolts. 
obviously that scope probe needs to be tweaked. No, I shouldn't be using, using a metal screwdriver here. Hopefully you've got a view of this. So I'm on 20 millivolts peak to peak. I'm on times 10. So the height seems a little off in the cal position. That would be, it's reading more like 42 or 43 millivolts. Although it may be correct, it's hard to say. But, uh, you know, at this point, we did definitely get at least a normal looking square wave and the ability to uh, tweak that square wave to be square. So let's just bring in a known signal. This is going to be one kilohertz. We want to look at channel one only. DC reference, actually it's ground and set our ground point. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? I uh, must be looking only at channel 2. Duh. Looks like the trace rotation could be tweaked a bit. It's not horrible. But it could be tweaked a tiny bit. This should be outputting 5 volts peak to peak. So we'll go to 0.5 volts because we're on divide by 10. Let's turn the output on. Uh, should be getting a 5 volt sine wave. Why am I not getting anything? Output is on. Oh, duh. Let's go back and actually center it. So this should be a 5 volt peak to peak sine wave. We are on 1 volt per division. And that's actually 3 volts peak to peak, which seems no, I wasn't in calibrated. There we go. One, so it's 5 volts peak to peak on that sine wave. That's perfect. The sine wave looks nice and clean. Let's do the same test on the other channel without shocking ourselves. On channel 2, let's ground and center his positioning out. Uh, actually, look at channel 2. AC coupled, channel 2 for trigger. There's actually a detent on that pot, so. And if we tweak the positioning a bit here. That's again 5 volts peak to peak. Excellent. Let's move on to a square wave. And that actually doesn't look bad either. Let's actually give it some frequency here. Uh, we'll leave it at 5 volts. Peak to peak, frequency 5 megahertz. Are we not triggering? Amplitude's 5 volts peak to peak. We should be seeing a square wave here. And I'm confused as to why we're not. DC coupled. Set the ground reference about there. It's 5 volts. Are we inverted here? Channel 2. Oh, 
Okay, what have I done wrong? I've obviously done something wrong. Come back to channel one and start over here. Channel one. Just noise. Trigger on channel one. I'm suddenly really confused. I mean, it's reacting to the. Point five volts. That should be showing that five volt sine wave. Oh, I didn't put the little knob on for the channel to invert. Although I think I can just add that without stripping it down again, because it just presses on. Yeah, completely distracted there. So channel two is not inverted. We're looking at channel one only. Something completely failed here. Go back to one or one kilohertz. One kilohertz get something nice and slow. There's the one kilohertz. Okay. Center the ground out, AC coupled, 0.1 volts per division, trigger on channel one, get a trigger. And there's our five volts peak to peak. That looks fine. The same setup on here. I want to look at channel two only. It's grounded. Let's center it. Transfer this over to channel two. AC and perfect, and that's five volt. That's reasonable five volts peak to peak. Let me try one megahertz. Again, that's nice and solid. Uh, looks perfectly happy to me. We'll come back to looking at channel one. I need to get to channel one for a trigger. That looks fine. One megahertz square wave. Considering we're uncompensated and not uh, terminated, I'm perfectly fine with that waveform. want to look only at channel 2. Set the trigger back to channel 2 and that looks fine as well. So, perfectly happy with that. Change it to a triangle wave. That looks completely normal. It's at 150 kilohertz. I don't think I can go much faster than that. No, 150 kilohertz is the max frequency on my generator that looks perfectly acceptable to me go back and lock the channel one uh, get a trigger and that looks fine as well so let's try some of the uh, arbitrary I want to load an arbitrary from the built-in library I'm going to select cardiac pulse Oops, no boxcar drag, back man hammering. That's not what I wanted. I want to load from the build in. No, 
that's a cardiac there. That's certainly not a cardiac on the screen. Because it's not been selected. That's a nice looking cardiac pulse train. There we go. Uh, the frequency is incredibly stupid high. Let's give it 90 hertz. I said 90 hertz. So a fast pulse rate. Looks like something you'd see in a medical show. We'll jump over to channel two and do the same thing. Look at channel two, trigger on channel two. And again, I'm happy with that. Uh, for what I'm going to use this scope for, this is working absolutely fine. Uh, calibration looks close enough. I mean, I'm seeing 5 volts on the scale for 5 volts. I uh, haven't really looked at the timing, but I, you know, for what I'm going to use it for, it's absolutely fine. So this looks like it was, for what it was, a successful uh, repair. Really just substituting a, what appeared to be a good board for a bad board. And of course, moving those switches across, so we had the veneer controls. Uh, I've actually got the protective cover for this one. So this one's actually, you know, this one had the better skins, the case isn't all bent to heck. Actually a decent little scope. I'll probably hold on to the other one just for parts. Uh, but anyhow, uh, thanks for coming along for the ride, and I seem to have a little operational two-channel Hitachi uh, model of V209, 20 megahertz oscilloscope, which will just be a nice little addition on the bench. So anyhow, we'll talk soon. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.